let's discuss addition and subtraction of fractions. Um, the first thing to recognize to help you understand this is that the denominator of the fraction is the unit. So, for example, one half can also be written as one half. And what that means is that if we take a fraction, uh, an expression like one fourth plus two fourths, we see pretty easily that it equals three fourths. Now, I've written it in a word unit form here. It could also be written as a numerical expression, not one half, one fourth plus two fourths equals three fourths. Now, as long as we have a common denominator, as long as the units are alike, uh, adding and subtraction, subtracting fractions is pretty straightforward. One half plus two fourths equals three fourths, and uh, we can turn that around. Three fourths minus two fourths would equal one fourth. That's all pretty easy. Now, where it gets more complicated is when we have fractions that don't have like denominators. For example, here with one third plus one fourth. Um, if I write it in unit form, we immediately see the problem. One third plus one fourth equals. Um, we 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 don't know how to do that. That's like adding an apple to a banana. What does it mean? We, so we have to turn it into a common denominator, a denominator where we have an equivalent fraction um, that means the same thing. So we need to find a way to express one third and one fourth using the same denominator. Now to do this, we need to have an understanding of equivalent fractions. So one third can be renamed in a variety of ways. One third is equal to two sixths, it's equal to three ninths, it's equal to four twelfths, it's equal to five fifteenths, and so on. Um, you might notice that um, w there's a pattern here where the denominator we're, we're counting, let's keep counting by threes, and that's because um, we're multiplying each time uh, by a fraction equivalent to one. So one third times two halves equals two sixths, and two sixths is uh, one third times three thirds is three ninths, etc. And we can prove that this is true um, using a uh, uh, area model of fractions here. So if I had one third and I divided that into two parts, you'll now see that I have sixths and that one third is equal to two sixths. And that's basically why this works. Well, not basically, that is why it works. Um, so where were we going with this? We were, wanted to find out what one third plus one fourth is. Now, when I look at this string of equivalent fractions here, one stands out to me, and that's four twelfths. Why that one stands out to me is that four twelve twelfths, um, I, can, I can turn fourths into twelfths as well. So if I had one fourth, and I multiply that by three over three, that which is equal to one, I see that four, one fourth is equal to three twelfths. So if I go back to this problem, I'll notice that one third is equal to four twelfths, and that one fourth is equal to three twelfths. So I add those together and I reach seven twelfths. Uh, the pattern that many people notice is that if I multiply each fraction, um, using the denominator of the other one. So if I multiply one fourth times three over three, because the other one is thirds, I will always, and I do the same on the other side, um, and I multiply this one by four over four, I'll always find a common denominator that way. Uh, sometimes there are shortcuts, like if I want to turn fourths into eighths, I don't have to use thirty seconds. I could recognize that I could just turn the fourths into eighths. So, for example, if I have one fourth plus one eighth, 
I, I don't have to do 8 30 seconds plus 4 30 seconds, although that would work. Um, I can just turn this one into eighths by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 2. Whatever you do to the bottom one, you have to do the top one. That's what I learned as a kid. Um, but it's because we're multiplying by something equal to 1. So then I see that this is 2 eighths plus 1 eighth and then equals 3 eighths. And subtraction works the same way, you're just subtracting. So if instead it was 1 fourth minus 1 eighth, I would see that that is 2 eighths. All right, take my word that that, for it, that, that is an eighth. Minus 1 eighth equals 1 eighth because 2 eighths minus 1 eighth is 1 eighth. Now, the thing that seems to really throw people for a loop is when we throw mixed numbers into the mix. So let's say we had 3 and a half minus three-fourths. These are friendly numbers. You might see the answer to this right away, but bear with me for a moment. Um, the first thing to recognize is that three and a half is really a shortcut way of saying three plus one half. Um, and so we have um, a whole number and a fraction here. Now, this is why people get a little confused, I think. So if we want to turn it all into fourths, we also need to turn that three into fourths. Um, so we have, well, three, if I multiply it by four fourths, that's how I would find out how many uh, fourths that is to turn halves into fourths. I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by two. I'm stringing this all out into one big expression. You don't have to do it this way, but it's, I'm showing what all the steps I'm doing are simultaneously. So then, I need to rearrange things here a little bit. Um, we see that we have 12 fourths. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Uh, how many fourths would it take to make three? Well, it would take 12. And how many fourths would it take to make one half? Well, that's two fourths. And then we're taking away three fourths. Um, Twelve fourths plus two fourths is fourteen fourths. Minus three fourths is eleven fourths. Um, I could also just mentally realize that two fourths minus three fourths means I'm taking away one more than I'm adding on. So twelve fourths minus one fourth is eleven fourths. Um, so the thing here is to be systematic and go step by step and make sure you deal with the whole numbers. I really believe in turning everything into improper fractions um, and not trying to do it all at once. There is a way to do this vertically with borrowing. To me, that is more confusing. Um, I like turning everything into improper fractions. Um, and the same thing would be true if I had one where, let's say if instead of it was three and a half minus one and three fourths, let's say it was three and a half or it was minus just minus three fourths. Let's make it one and three fourths. There's all sorts of errors here which can crop up because they're very tempting. But if I turn it into mixed numbers, I'll see that um, we said that this here is the um, three and a half. It's fourteen fourths. So we have fourteen fourths minus well one and three fourths. One is four fourths, and another three fourths. That's seven fourths. Um, so 14 fourths minus 7 fourths is 7 fourths. Um, it's, it's very tempting to do things like take away 3 minus 1, which is, which is fine. That's 2 in it. So we have 2 and a half. And then we have to make sure we take away that other 3 fourths and not do something funky like take away the half from the 3 fourths. So I really like to turn everything into improper fractions. Um, I, I find that that is the way I can be really clear. Um, now, if I really want to be fancy here, I can turn this back into a mixed number. I recognize that I can take out one whole from that. That would be four-fourths. So I have one, and then I would have three-fourths remaining. So that's one and three-fourths. I've also shown you ways to do this with long division, uh, but that's a little bit outside the scope of this video. Um, well, I hope this is helpful. Um, please let me know if you have questions about this topic.